Um, I'd like to thank uh, Joe Mulholland and the McGill School for inviting me here to contribute to this presentation on the issue of responding to the security threats against Europe, its democracies and its citizens. I will focus on Ireland within the European Union and present to you my analysis of the current and emerging threats facing Ireland, how these affect our relationships with the European Union, how and outline why I believe the Irish government, by its inaction, in putting the security of the state, its citizens, and our European partners at risk. During my presentation, I want you to take one principle in mind. <coughs> national security is a national responsibility. That means that the security of this state and the protection of its citizens is the responsibility of the Irish government. The Taoiseach, as head of government, is personally responsible for ensuring that the police, military, and intelligence services are sufficiently effective to safeguard our national security. I have read an argument that when a government fails in its national security responsibilities, that it has also broken its contract with its people. When I worked in military intelligence, it was often our task to analyze and produce assessments on the threats of our national security. It became very clear in the latter years that the threats and risks had increased substantially and that if they materialized, we would have serious difficulties in this country. While still in service, myself and others did our best to ensure that our decision makers were aware of these assessments. When serving in the military, an individual is curtailed, and rightly so, with what they may disclose to the public. Even after leaving the army, it is part of our culture still to be reluctant to talk to the press. Shortly after I left the forces in 2013, I was watching an RTE documentary regarding the state's financial crash that had occurred a few years previously. A number of politicians were interviewed. It is striking that a number of them stated that if only someone had warned them before the crash about their budgetary decisions, that they would have done things completely different. It occurred to me then that perhaps our politicians are uninformed regarding the poor state of our security and intelligence structures. I summarized, I summarized that if they were aware, then surely they would do something about it. It was at this stage in 2014 that I took an unusual step for a former military intelligence officer to write an article for the Irish Times, the purpose of which was to inform our politicians and ensure that no one could claim ignorance thereafter of the poor state of our national security, security posture. When a security consultant conducts a security risk assessment of an organization, they can find the organization's security culture usually falls within four categories. Immature, aware, advanced, cutting edge. Ireland's security culture falls within the immature category. That is to say, as a state, there is limited risk awareness, our security measures are purely reactive, and there are limited resources attached to security provision. This, no doubt, stems from the luxury of our geographical position on the western edge of Europe. Here, unlike the other neutrals in Europe, we have been protected from potential adversaries by NATO, and more importantly, by our close neighbor, the United Kingdom. We have achieved our security on the cheap. Today, you can still hear Irish people, including some politicians, saying that as a neutral country, no one wants to harm us. They appear to be ignorant of the fact that our world has changed and our security environment has become unpredictable and unstable. For example, the cyber threat does not recognize international borders and can easily bypass the physical uh, security that had been provided for us previously by our larger neighbors. We have developed our foreign in direct investment 
and our research and development profile. You can be assured that we have also become attractive as a source for both state and business espionage. The globalization of media has brought conflicts straight into our living rooms. This has often resulted in pressure being put on our government to react where previously they would have desisted. And more importantly, our immigration policies has drastically changed the profile of our population. Now, we no longer have to worry about indigenous terrorism, but we also have to consider the transnational Salafist jihadist threat. Anyone who thinks that this Salafist threat, jihadist threat, will disappear with the defeat of the so-called Islamic State in Iraq and Syria are sadly mistaken. This threat will be with us for many years to come. Recently, I wrote an opinion piece in the Irish Independent and stated, one, the self-proclaimed Islamic State has declared war on the West. They have made no distinction regarding Ireland. In their minds, Ireland is part of the Crusader West and therefore is a target. Three, the Islamic State has informed us that they would use the migrant crisis as a means to get their operatives into Europe, and they have done so. The Islamic State has ordered its operatives to hit Western targets wherever possible, whenever possible, and to use whatever possible means are at their disposal, and they have done so. Finally, Ireland needs to be prepared to combat the threat posed by those few individuals that have come to live among us and who wish to do us and our neighbours harm. Not alone do we have to worry about who is already in the state, but you have to take into account those who can freely travel here and reside here because of our EU membership. For example, it is estimated that in the United Kingdom there are 23,000 extremists, Germany 24,000, Belgium 18,000, France 17,000, and even in neutral Sweden 2,000. All of these extremists have access throughout the European Union, including here, to Ireland. Business leaders, when assessing a location to move their business, consider a number of factors. One of the key considerations is security. Therefore, an attack in Ireland could have a significant impact on our economic well-being. And we could suffer long-term reputational damage as a safe and secure place to live, work, are to visit. Tourists make similar decisions when booking a holiday. Here in Ireland, tourism supports some 220,000 jobs and generates revenues of up to 7 billion for our economy. So an attack anywhere in Ireland is not just a Dublin-centric problem, but a countrywide problem. Such an attack will affect businesses and tourism in every county even here in faraway Donegal and the wild Atlantic Way. This is something that should concern every member of our parliament. In order to prevent these threats from materialising, we need to ensure that our counter-terrorism strategies are first class. The cornerstone of which is intelligence. Most terrorist attacks do not come without some forewarning. Therefore, it has to be asked, why does intelligence fail? Research shows that intelligence failures are at two levels, governmental and operational. Because of constraints, time constraints, I will concentrate on government failures. As I list them, I would like you to think in your mind, how do you think we measure up to this? This list includes failing to have mature and effective state intelligence structures in place, failing to ensure that intelligence is shared within services, between services, and with our foreign partners, failing to have in place all-encompassing counter-terrorism laws, failing to have effective public policies regarding border controls, immigration, integration, travel restrictions, security vetting, and ensuring that extremists don't take charge of any places of worship. Failing to prevent radicalization in prisons, schools, and universities. But the biggest failure of government 
is not learning from other governments' mistakes. Since 2014, the Taoiseach and previous various government ministers and the Garda Commissioner has continuously informed us that the threat in this state is considered possible but unlikely. That assessment is usually accompanied with comments such as, there is no evidence, there is no direct evidence, we don't have any evidence of a threat. There is an old intelligence, intelligence adage regarding evidence that one should remember. It states that absence of evidence is not the same as evidence of absence. Of course, the government is correct when it states that there is no evidence. It's very hard to find the evidence if you don't know which haystack to look for, the mind say to find the needle within it. If there should be a terrorist attack, a major cyber attack, or an espionage discovery, there will be an outcry for an inquiry. As you know, inquiries are very expensive, both in time and finance. I can save the taxpayer a lot of money. I can tell you here today that any expert conducting an inquiry will examine our current intelligence architecture against the reasons for intelligence failure. It will not take them very long to come to the conclusion that this state's counterterrorism preparation was grossly negligent. Our current intelligence structures are not fit for purpose. Not alone does this put the lives of our people at risk, but also those of our close neighbor in the United Kingdom and elsewhere in Europe. However, everything is not doom and gloom. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Already, our new Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, has promised that within 50 days of taking office, that is the 2nd of August and no one's counting, he will have a new cabinet security committee established similar to COBRA in the United Kingdom. Recently, we have learned that Mr. Varadkar is a good runner. So now it'll be interesting to see how good he is at getting over obstacles. I say that because if he wishes to implement the changes that he is proposing, he's going to have to get over many obstacles that will be placed in his way by vested interests. I say that because it is reported in 2016 that Mr. Simon Coveney, the then Minister for Defence, made proposals regarding changing our intelligence structures, but was met by fierce opposition from, by the then Taoiseach, Minister for Justice, Department of Justice, and Angarda Siakona. However, another light is shining. There appears to be greater awareness of our security inadequacies by a growing number of TDs and senators. Importantly, among them is the leader of the opposition, Mr. Michal Martin, another Corkman, like Mr. Coveney, obviously to do with the water down there, who has acknowledged that we have a security problem and that we need to consider creating a civilian intelligence agency and rethink, and rethink how we do security. So what do we need to do? The following are some of my suggested immediate steps. One, review the structure and function of the National Security Committee. Two, establish a National Intelligence Analysis Centre and appoint the Director of National Intelligence to lead it. This lead individual will be responsible for advising the government on national security and the further fusion of all intelligence from across all government departments and agencies. And third, extract the state security function from the Garda Commissioner and establish a separate civilian intelligence agency. If you wish to see how this could be achieved, you need to look no farther than Canada. There, in 1984, the Canadian government took state security functions from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Mounties, and established a separate civilian intelligence agency. This decision was made following the Macdonald Commission report, which investigated wrongdoing activities by the police, something we are familiar with in this state. In conclusion, I put it to you that we need to change our culture, our security culture, and our intelligence while we still have time. It is said that when a state reacts in a crisis, its decision-making options are reduced, its solutions are usually more expensive, and rarely does it provide the time to consider second and third order consequences, leading to unintended and undesired effects. Because if we don't, 
and something happens, the terrorists will have the upper hand and we will be playing catch-up on their timings. Thank you very much.